just as we've graphed systems of equations in the past, um, we can also graph systems of inequalities. Really, the only difference here, if you have a system of linear inequalities, is that you want to graph both of the inequalities on the same set of axes. With a, um, with a system of equations, we were interested in the points of intersection between your graphs. With inequalities, what we're interested in is the areas of intersection. So what we're interested really in here is what part gets shaded by both of the inequalities. All right, now something that I found to be super, super helpful when I'm dealing with uh, graphing systems is only graph one inequality at a time completely graph it, graph the line, graph the shading, the whole nine yards, um, and then graph the other one in a different color. And I found that this really helps me stay organized. You can use a pen or a pencil. Um, and again, you don't have to do this, but it really, really uh, helps keep things straight and it makes it very clear in terms of um, where these intersection regions are that we want for our solution. All right, so let's take a look here at problem number 20. The first inequality that we have is y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1. Just like before, remember we want to first graph the line that's associated with it, that boundary line, y equals 2x plus 1. Because it's greater than or equal to, this is going to be a solid line when I go in to sketch it. All right, so let's try that. Y-intercept of 1, that's this point right here. My slope is 2 over 1, so I'm going to go up 2 over 1, and again you can put in... Oh, you can put in a couple of points there. Maybe you can put in a couple of points. There's a point up two over one. There's a point we can kind of draw in a solid line to represent that. The next thing that we want to do is we want to do a test. And to do a test, we go back to our original inequality. I can use the point zero, zero here to test because it does not lie on my line. I end up with zero is greater than two times zero plus one, uh, which says zero is greater than one, and this is false. So what that means is for my red line here, I do not want to graph the side with zero, zero. I want to graph the other side of the equation. So I'm going to graph this upper region here in red. All right, now I'm going to go and I'm going to switch colors. Let's go to blue, I guess. And I want to work on my second inequality here. And I want to graph it on the same set of axes. Again, start with your boundary line. In this case, it's y equals negative 1 third x minus 2. This time, the line that I draw is going to be dotted because my original inequality here was less than but not equal to. So my y-intercept is negative 2. I go down to negative 2 and I put a dot. My slope is negative 1 third, which means I'm going to go down 1 over 3 this time. And I'm going to end up with a graph that's moving downhill because of the negative slope. So here I draw in my dotted line. And keep in mind that this is the blue line. And that's the um, boundary region that I'm interested in for this graph. Now I need to decide, am I going to shade everything on the bottom below the blue line or everything on the top above the blue line? To decide, go back to my original inequality. Again, I can test 0, 0 here as a point because it does not lie on the line. When I do that, I get 0 is less than negative 1 third times 0 minus 2, which says that this gives us 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 0 is not less than negative 2. This is false. So I do not want to shade the side of blue that has 0, 0, so I want to shade the other side in blue down here. So what does that mean in terms of my final region? You can see that the colors actually do help a little bit here. My final region of overlap is everything between this blue line and this red one down here. So let's go back up here and let's, um, you know what, let's just sketch this in here in yellow. This region here is the region of overlap. Everything below that blue line up until we get to this red line, that's the only section that got shaded both blue and red. And so you, it's nice to be able to kind of go through and do something that, that shows a demarcation here of what that final region is. Everything along that dotted line this way and along that solid line in that direction there. And any point in that region will make both of these original inequalities true.
All right. With that, so that's basically the process. Just graph both of them and then really very clearly mark the area of overlap that got shaded by both regions, and that would be your final solution. Um, we can have as many inequalities as we want. Again, I highly recommend using different colors for each of these. Um, so let's go through and try this here. For the first one, we've got x plus y is less than 5. Um, and so in order to graph that, I want to look at my boundary line x plus y equals 5. This is not in slope-intercept form, so I need to get the y by itself first before I identify the slope and the y-intercept to graph it. Now I can see that my slope is going to be negative 1 and my y-intercept is going to be a positive 5. And I can graph that point on my line. Now because my original inequality here is less than, I'm going to be using a dotted line for my boundary. So y-intercept of positive 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my original dot. My slope is negative 1. Think of it as negative 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And I can get a dotted line coming down this direction and up this direction. The next thing that I need to have is I need to have an area of my graph that's shaded. In order to shade a section, uh, I need a test point. I can, in fact, use 0, 0 here. Go back to the original inequality. That gives me 0 plus 0 is less than 5. And 0 is, in fact, less than 5. That's a true statement. So the side that has 0, 0 is going to be the side that gets this red shading here. So everything down in that corner of the graph is up for grabs. Now I need to go it through and use my other conditions. The next condition here says that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Let's change that to blue. Now when I start at this one, if I look at my boundary equation, I'm looking at the line x equals 0. Um, x equals 0, notice you can't get the y by itself. So this is my undefined slope. I can't get it in slope-intercept because there is, in fact, no slope. So this is a vertical line. And I have a vertical line going through x equals 0. Well, that line happens to be the y-axis. Now, because my original one, I want x greater than or equal to 0, means that if a point lies on the y-axis, I can include it. So I'm just going to draw the y-axis here in as, as kind of a dark blue because that line is exactly the line x equals 0. And I want to include that in my in my values. Now I'm only interested in values where x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's pick a point that's not on my line. I always kind of like that 5, 0. I don't know why. Um, here this means I'm going to put 5 in for x and 0 in for y. Well in my equation up here or my inequality I only have an x so I put that in. 5 is greater than or equal to 0 is true so that means I want to shade the side with 5, 0. So in blue everything gets shaded over here on the right. Okay, so so far what I have noticed as I look through here is I have going up this solid line and down this dotted line, I kind of have this region here of the graph that's in an overlap situation. Kind of that weird downward triangle picture. All right, I do, however, still have one more inequality. So let's change our colors again. Uh, green, why not? Uh, this time what I'm looking at is the inequality y is less than 2. Um, so think about, first of all, what y equals 2 looks like. In this case, their y is by itself, so you can identify your slope is 0 and your y-intercept is 2. Here's my y-intercept. A slope of 0 means rise of 0 rise, 1 run, and I get a horizontal line. Because it was y is less than 2, this is going to be a dotted line. And it's going as a horizontal line through that point of 2. Now here I want y values that are less than 2. So if I pick a point, um, for example, I can use the point 0, 0 here. 0 is less than 2 is true. So I want to shade all of the values on the side of 0, 0 here that go through the origin. And again, this gets a little bit messy in terms of your graphs. The colors help. Uh, you may want to kind of sketch things out separately a little bit if that helps you. Um, but basically what we've got here, if we look at this triangle uh, piece that we had before that went up along this blue line and down this dotted line, I've kind of tipped, cut off the tip here, and now I'm only interested in this kind of bottom section here. So let's go back and highlight in yellow that final region. 
uh, that got shaded by everything, blue, green, and red. So it's everything, it's gotta be to the right of the x-axis, or the right of the y-axis. It can only go up to y equals two, and then it has to stop because I can't pick a y values greater than two because of that dotted green line. And then it only works up until I get to this dotted red line, and then it cuts down this way. And so this bottom weird looking trapezoid section that extends down forever is going to end up being my final region that's going to be the solution to my system of inequalities. So if I picked any point in this yellow region, it would make all three of these inequalities true. And if I picked any point outside of that yellow region, it would make at least one of those faults and thus not be a, a solution to the system of inequalities, which is what I'm interested in looking at.